Hi, I'm Leanne from Bat Lady Herbals, and welcome to my video. So if you're following my YouTube channel, you have seen my last hiking video. We wandered around in Oviedo, Florida, and we ran across a couple really interesting plants. Now one plant that it didn't make it into that video, but is in that same area, is one that I wanted to introduce you to today. Now this plant is really well known for its benefits to our wonderful pollinators, including the monarch butterfly, of which it's a very famous host plant. And that is butterfly weed, or one of our native milkweeds called Asclepius tuberosa. Now, Asclepius tuberosa is the only plant in the Asclepius genus to not have toxic latex in its sap, which actually makes it extremely beneficial as a medicinal herb. Another common name aside from butterfly weed is pleurisy root. Now, pleurisy is an inflammatory condition that happens to your lungs. Usually it's caused by a cold or flu, some upper respiratory condition. But what pleurisy does, it makes it really hard to breathe and it causes a lot of pain. So pleurisy root is the common name of this plant, or, and uh, that kind of gives you an idea of one of its traditional uses, which is still its most common use today. The root of this plant is one of the more medicinal and commonly used parts of the plant. But really the leaves, the flowers, and the root are all able to be used medicinally. In addition to its uses medicinally, it's also a traditional food source for the local natives. Now aside from medicinal and edible, the Native Americans use this plant to create fibers that they could weave and create fabric with. So this is a really useful plant to have around in general. And it's actually being studied for its use as a hydrocarbon, which is a uh, kind of research study they're doing to determine if any plants can be energy sources. So this is a good one to keep an eye on. And this plant can be found all throughout Florida and upwards into some of the more northern states. Now this milkweed is a native perennial and it blooms from June through September, at least in this part of the world. Now it has very distinctive blooms, if you'll look at them really closely. They are absolutely gorgeous and fascinating. Um, this plant usually gets about one and a half to three feet tall. The flowers grow in an umbel, which means they're kind of a cluster, and they're spindle shaped. That's one of the ways that you can tell this plant. Another reason, or another identifying factor is the hairy stems. See all those hairs along the stem. And then of course the shape of the leaf and the hairy, the hairs that continue on the underside of the leaf. Now since this milkweed is unique and doesn't have the latex in the sap, the sap is actually clear. So if you're not too sure about your identification and you break off a little bit of it, it's going to bleed a clear liquid instead of a milky liquid. And that's one of the ways that you can tell this species apart from other milkweeds. So the root and really all the parts of this plant can be used to help uh, with just about any lung complaint. The uh, Asclepius tuberosa is a expectorant, which means that it's gonna help clear up any congestion in your lungs by helping you to cough it out. It's also a vasodilator, which means that it's going to help to open up your blood vessels. And it specifically targets the ones in your lungs so you can get a little bit of oxygen to your lungs a little bit easier but it does work throughout 
your entire circulatory system. It's also a carminative, meaning that it could help settle stomach complaints, but it was typically used as a heal-all or a panacea by a lot of the white settlers of this country. In addition to working for lung complaints, the root is also really good for skin care. Now you can dry it, powder it, and make poultices out of it to put on lacerations, ulcers, anything to speed healing, and to help reduce inflammation on your wounds. It also has shown some benefit to be anti-aging for your skin. So the root of this plant can be extremely beneficial for your skin. <laughs> Pretty much all of the milkweeds contain some toxic compounds and this one's no exception. So you need to be very careful with it because if you take too much of the butterfly weed, you could induce vomiting or diarrhea or a couple of other side effects that are not so pleasant. But in that same vein, the leaves are a traditional remedy for diarrhea. Now, even though this plant does contain toxic compounds, it has been a traditional food crop for a lot of the natives in the area. So one of the ways it can be eaten, the buds of the flowers, the unopened flowers, can be cooked and they kind of taste like peas. And when it comes to the flowers, during the summer and hot times of the year, they also tend to produce extra nectar, which can drop off like crystallizations, like little, little bitty crystals. And those can be used as a sweetener or just as a little uh, sugary snack on the side of the trail. And that's why it attracts so many pollinators because it is such a rich source of nectar. Now, when you cook the young shoots, that's gonna taste somewhat like asparagus and you can cook it in the same ways that you cook asparagus. And the tips, just the tips of the older shoots can also be cooked. And they're gonna have more of a spinach-like quality and can be cooked as a green pot herb, just like you do with spinach and kale and all of those dark leafy greens. Now, a little later in the season, you'll come by and see seed pods hanging from this plant. And those are edible as well. But in addition to that, the seeds can be used to make an edible oil. However, the seeds are extremely small and it's going to take a lot of them to make a decent amount of oil to be used. <laughs> Once again, I want to caution you about the toxic compounds present in this plant. Because of those toxic compounds, it should never be used with anyone who's pregnant or breastfeeding. Also, the species, <clears throat> the family this plant is in, the nickname for it, or the common name for it, is the dogbane family because the toxic compounds present in every member of that family used to be used to poison wild dogs around settlements so that they would stop causing problems. So keep in mind, your furry friends might not be able to tolerate this plant at all, and it could cause some major issues. Also keep a lookout for symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea because those are the symptoms of toxicity from con consuming too much of this plant. Now because of this, if you do use it at slightly larger quantities, it can be used as a diuretic. Just be cautious that that's bordering on toxic territory. Now this plant also acts as a phytoestrogen, which is a plant sourced estrogen. So anyone who is taking hormones or has issues with their hormones should definitely check with their doctor before trying to add this plant to their routine. And in addition, it does contain a chemical that can cause problems with the heart or interference with certain heart medications. So thank you again for joining me today. My name is Leanne from Bat Lady Herbals. Please, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be kept up to date with what I upload. In addition to this channel on YouTube, I do have a blog and I will link the information to my blog down below. And down below will also be information on how to find my Patreon if you want to support this channel and become a patron. I also have a Teespring shop where you can go on and find uh, quite a few designs to help promote 
hiking and herbalism here in Florida. <clears throat> I also offer backyard tours. So if you want me to come over to your, to your yard and help you figure out what nature might have in store for you, feel free to contact me. My information for that will be down below as well. So thank you again and have a wonderful day.